Finishing up with example three, Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling is uh, actually a problem that we are going to solve a differential equation for every time we have one of these. Uh, so uh, just to let you get a couple of definitions, we could say let's let capital T be the temperature and let's let little t be time. Uh, many textbooks are going to use a capital T and a lowercase t, so we want to be familiar with that. Um, if we just begin to, to work this out, the rate at which an object cools, that's how your temperature is changing. That's your rate. So we can see immediately that's dt, capital T for temperature, over little dt, uh, which is for time, temperature changing with respect to time. That's directly proportional, so that means we're going to have some constant. Now you could put K or C, either one, multiplied to the difference in temperature between the object and the surrounding medium. Well, difference, of course, means we're going to subtract. We're going to take the temperature of that object minus the surrounding medium temperature. Generally, when you see the surrounding medium, that's going to represent the room temperature. And uh, as we begin to read this problem through, it says if an object cools from 125 degrees Celsius uh, Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in half an hour when surrounded by air at a temperature of 75 degrees, uh, that being surrounded by air at a temperature of 75 degrees is implying that that's the surrounding medium. That's the room temperature. So what we can do immediately right here is take dt over little dt. K times, well, we've got the temperature of the object. The surrounding medium or the room temperature is 75. Now, because this is Newton's law of cooling, we're going to see that this object is heated up and it gradually cools down. We're going to be assuming that T, the temperature of the object, is above 75 degrees. It's above the room temperature. Now, that's going to come into play in a little bit. But let's separate our variables, get our capital T's together on one side. I can do some division and say uh, divide by t minus 75 on both sides. Uh, get everything that's not a capital T on the right side. So multiply both sides through by dt, the little dt that is. And at this point, we will just take antiderivatives. In other words, we're going to take an integral, an indefinite integral at that. So uh, as we integrate, 1 over t minus 75, you might take a guess that this is related to the natural log. And actually it is. It's the natural log of t minus 75. Generally, we are going to put uh, absolute value bars around that. However, if our temperature is above 75 degrees, we know that t minus 75 is always positive. So we don't need those absolute values. It's very tempting to add in a constant at this point. Generally, we just leave the constant for the right side. As we integrate over on this right side, we'll get kt, and then we'll throw in our constant. We can put in a plus c. So we're definitely making progress. What you'd like to do, of course, is to eventually get rid of that natural log and just have a t. So we're going to exponentiate. And as we exponentiate, take e to the left side, e to this right side. The left side, of course, just becomes t minus 75. e and natural log are uh, inverse operation or inverse functions. On the right side, just as we did at the beginning of the lesson, we can use a property of exponents and say that e to the kt plus c is the same thing as e to the kt times e to the c. Now I'm going to recopy this up here at the top. 
And in all honesty, we're so close to being done, but we're going to have to find some missing pieces. We're going to solve for e to the c and solve for e to the k. To do that, we need some help. If we look at what has been highlighted, it says that this object cools from 125 degrees Celsius to 100, uh, keep saying Celsius, 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in half an hour. That has a wonderful implication. It's really saying that at time zero, the temperature is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's our starting temperature. That's at time equals zero. We can plug this information in into this equation. We'd get 125 minus 75 equals e to the k times zero times e to the c. And k times zero is zero. e to the zero is actually just a one. 125 minus 75 is actually a 50. And we'll have 50 is equal to e to the c. Now at this point I do want to point out that we are so close to being done. What we've just done is we've found out what e to the c is. We can now rewrite this problem and say we've got t minus 75 equals e to the kt times 50. And of course we could even put that 50 out in front. Now of course we also need to find some other information as well. There's other data. If you look at the top right up here it says that the temperature cooled to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in half an hour. So when the time was one half of an hour the temperature was down to 100. I'm going to plug in a capital T of 100. I'm going to plug in this little t of just one half. And of course we know that 100 minus 75 is 25. And uh, you know k times a half, well that's the same thing as having k over 2. And uh, as we continue on, we can divide both sides by 50. Remember our ultimate goal here is to solve for e to the k. Not just get k itself. That's what you do in pre-cal. We're going to solve for e to the k. It's going to make life easier. You can see on the left side when I reduce I get one half. But the big question now is how do I just get e to the k? And if you look closely, you can see we've got a huge clue. We see e to the k in there. We don't want to see that division of a 2. And the way we can fix this up is multiply a 2 up high as an exponent. Raise both sides to that second power. We're using an exponent property, saying a power to a power has a multiplication of those exponents. What are we left with? Simply e to the k equals one fourth. So right now we know what e to the k is. And we are amazingly close to being done. Amazingly close. Here's what I want to point out to you. This, you can go up here to this original uh, equation that we are so close to wrapping up with. It's uh, this thing right here. And you can say, well, now I know what e to the k is. And uh, because we know that, we can go ahead and just plug in right in here. Sorry, having a bit of trouble with this pen. We can plug that e to the k in. I'm going to do that right off to the side. And we'll say we'll have t minus 75 equals 50. But that e to the k is actually one fourth now. And raising it up to the t, we just are left with this. Meaning we have as a final equation, when I add a 75 to both sides, we have this wonderful form. And 
This equation will allow you to find the temperature of your object when you substitute any time in. You can say, I wonder how we're doing temperature-wise 15 minutes after the object uh, was removed from the heated source. Uh, you could let T equal one quarter. You know, a 15 minutes would be one quarter hour and so forth. You could say, I wonder what my temperature is five hours later. Well, you know, let T equal five and, and we've got it. The point is our time is measured in hours. Uh, but as we finish this problem up, you can see it says find the temperature at the end of the next half hour. We know that after one half hour, our temperature was at 100 degrees. The next half hour, if you're really on your toes, you're going to say, well, that's just a half hour after that half hour. That implies that this is just one hour later from when we first measured time. Plug in T equals 1. We'll have 75 plus 50, 1 fourth to the 1. 1 fourth to the 1, of course, is just 1 fourth. 50 divided by 4. Well, that's the same thing as saying 25 divided by 2 if you reduce that. And 25 divided by 2 is just 12 and a half. 75 plus 12.5 is 87.5. This is degrees Fahrenheit. So this would be your temperature one hour. You could even put parentheses in there to remind yourself this is one hour after we started measuring time.